it's Deanne Love here and this week I want to share with you a linear isolation turn. But to do that, I kind of need a table. Cool, look at that, a table, exactly what I need. I kind of feel like a primary school teacher again, but all good, or a magician, because I just kind of magic this table up. So the table is usually a representation in my imagination when I am trying to work out these linear or these line style isolations, but I have a table right here and I'm going to show you why it's so important. Now, before I start, this is a 90 centimeter polypro 35 inch. You can do this with any size hoop. I learned most of my isolations with a dance hoop and then I realized it was a little less heavy to use a polypro, but you could use a smaller size or you could even use a kiddies hoop. Any circle will do for these. You will modify your hand and arm placement depending on the diameter of the hoop, but you can definitely play around with any size that works for you. So let's get started. I'm gonna work this table. Okay, so here is where the table theory comes in. Linear is line, and in this case, it's this horizontal line or this flat tabletop. And I have seen some amazing teachers do this on the floor but I'm feeling a little lazy, so I'm gonna bring the table up to me. Now, my hoop is in front of me and my knuckles are facing up or out towards you, and it just so happens that the tabletop meets my hand. Now, sometimes if you had a, a smaller hoop, then you would need a higher tabletop to test this theory out. But here is how the linear isolation in the front plane or the front of the body works. So if I was to keep the outside circumference or the outside circle of my hoop rolling along the table, then I would be making a really perfect linear isolation. Now, it's pretty challenging to get a perfect line with your isolations if you're not training a lot, if you're not practicing a lot, if you're not using the table theory or practice, or if you're not watching yourself in a mirror. But hey, it's all fun so we can play around with it. But if you keep this concept in mind, then it might help you a little. So with your hand touching the table and the outside of the hoop touching the table, you're going to roll the hoop. If it's in your right hand, you're gonna roll it out to the left. And notice that my thumb is down, but my hoop is still touching the line or the table. And I'm going to get to a point where I'm now making a line out from my shoulder, going out through my hand or the center of my hand, and it's touching my hoop. Now my hoop hasn't gone up or down, it's on the line, it's going linear. And if I roll back towards that first position, then I'm still on the line. So I would roll out and back in. Now, the cool part of this is if you were practicing with a table or on the floor or uh, watching in the mirror, is that you can keep the base of the hoop dragging along the table and practice the next hand flip. So from the base, roll out long line, thumb is down. Now as you raise your elbow, and this is a key part, as you raise your elbow up towards the sky, you're going to create this shelf. So as the hoop is coming back towards the center of your body, what's going to happen is you are going to fold or roll your hand down so that your palm is facing the earth and the top of your hand is facing towards the sky. Now, if you go too high, then you've kind of broken that linear illusion. And if you go, if you drop too low, which I'll show you a little bit later because a lot of people do, then again, you're not on the line. And with momentum, the hoop is going to push along, still on the table, still on the line. Wouldn't it be amazing if they were always this perfect? And then you're going to roll your palm towards you. I'm gonna shift this way just a little bit because my table's not long enough. And if I take my arm out, then this is the position that a perfect linear isolation would land in. My thumb is up, my arm is coming out directly in a straight line from my shoulder. I can roll it back in, and now I'm at first position. Opposite side thumb down, drag the hoop towards you, roll the palm towards the earth with momentum, of course, roll the palm towards you, thumb is up, arm is out, back down, out. <laughs> 
kind of hard with a, with a table, and out to the first side. So that, in a perfect world, is a linear isolation. Now we are going to try a linear isolation turn. Now we're going to take the table away, but keep it in our imagination. All right, so let's still imagine that that table is there and we're going to roll out to one side. As we drag the hoop towards us, our palm goes down and then when it's over on that same side, so now it's on my right side with my right thumb up. How cool is that? I can come back down. First position across the body, palm down, thumb up, same hand, same side. All right, so here is where we get to turn. My toes have been facing you the whole time. And now I am going to wrap my thumb around the front of the hoop. So you can see my thumb over here, my right thumb is wiggling. Now it is going to be my thumb that will be the hook and the anchor. Now as I turn into this linear isolation turn, I'm actually going to turn towards my hoop, going to bend my elbow in, but take it up. I'm going to talk about the elbow thing really soon. So I want to still imagine that I have this table. And now it is my thumb that is the hook. I'm going to show you this in a little bit. With momentum, as the hoop pushes out, as I take my arm out, I'm doing all this in my right arm, I'm going to wrap my fingers in around. And now I'm in this position again, but I just faced away from you. So I can repeat that process, wrap the thumb around the front of the hoop, draw the elbow in, but take it high, turn my toes towards you with momentum. Hoop goes around the thumb, fingers go in, and I'm out in this position again. All right, let's talk about the elbow and why it's so important to direction the elbow High, not too high and not too low. As you bring the hoop across, and if you were to keep it on that tabletop, then if your elbow went low or not high enough, then the hoop is going to swing down. You're going to lose that line. It's more of like a cool dip and swing. So by keeping the elbow high and the armpit open, you're creating that imaginary line, you're keeping it high enough. So it's essentially moving along the table. Keep the elbow high and out. Wrap the thumb around the front, turn towards your hoop. Again, if I don't keep the elbow high, it's going to be a swing, which could be cool, but we want to bring the hoop along the table, along the table each time. Now, one other thing that is important, one other visualization that I like to use is the line and circle. It's like a lollipop. So we came from this center and now we're out here. We have this line coming out from our shoulder and then we have the lolly or the candy on the end. Now, we don't want it to be too droopy, so we want to make sure that um, our grip is fairly tight. And then sometimes it's difficult to see without a mirror, or without videoing yourself, but we don't want it too high or too low. So we kind of want to keep this line or this linear concept happening with our whole body. And the same happens here. If you come out to this second point, and your chest is open, but if you kind of droop through the wrist, then your hoop is going to be down. You're not going to get that sharp line and circle effect. So you can really push it out. Sometimes you'll feel like you are going to lose the hoop, but if you just give it a little bit of energy at that last moment, then you can bring the hoop into that line and circle shape. Now, I appreciate that isolations, linear or otherwise, can be quite taxing on your arms and they require you to build some strength. So, in the next video, I am going to share with you some of those conditioning movements that I do to build a ton of strength and make my isolation sharper. Okay, so are you rocking those linear isolations, trying to keep the elbow high, think about the thumb, work that upper body strength, all of the things? 
you know what? They're really cool and they're really fun once you get them and you can start to play with those kind of whipping motions and really start to get your body into alignment. Now, don't forget also on Friday, I am going to share a flow session that has this linear isolation turn in it. So subscribe. It's the easiest way to keep in touch and make sure that you don't miss that flow session or tomorrow's conditioning workout for strong isolation arms. Also, we hang out on Instagram. I'm at Deanne Love XO. Big hoop love from me to you. Mwah.